Welcome to Forever Exile, the Path of Exile podcast. I am Justin, aka Tags. And I'm Tyler, Wrecker of Days. This is episode 46 of Forever Exile. This is our special 3.12 Dev Manifesto and Patch Notes. Uh, it's 3.12. It's 3.12. And yes, it is exciting. 3.12. Thank you very much. You can call it 3. Point, what did you call it? 3.12? 3.12. Nah, it's, it's 3.120. Could be whatever I want it to be. Anyway, they came out today, and hopefully we're going to have this out today. There's not much <laughs> to talk about, thankfully. Pretty boring. Anyway, 3.12. <laughs> Dev Manifesto, patch notes. We've had a few other things this week that have come out, but we'll talk about those at the end of the week. Plus, we'll have played, which is going to be pretty exciting. Yeah. But we're going to get into it. We've done patch notes before. I don't remember when we did our first one. This will be nothing like our first one. The very first one we ever did, we read through every single thing. Ah, uh, wasn't that classic? I mean, it was glorious, really, but we will not be doing that. Uh, so we basically, we hit on the topics that we think are big pointers, things that we like things that you might like. We know everybody's going to be checking out the patch notes anyway, so we're probably not telling you anything new. We're just telling you what we like or didn't like. Yeah, and if this is your first time listening to us, don't go back and listen to episode one and two. Okay? Okay. If you listen to episode one and two and are still here, you are, you're the true champ. You're the true hero. Yeah. You you made it. (laughs) And we thank you for (laughs) sticking through that. (laughs) All right, so heist. 3.12, 3.12 3.12, 3.12 is all about heist. Lots of changes. So let's just get right into the heist changes. Or the, not changes, I guess the whole new thing. First off, I literally don't care about any of it except the challenge rewards. This is the first time where I'm like, oh my God, I actually want all three of them. Ah, good for and you. I don't even like cats. <laughs> I think they put the cat, is the cats in the middle, right? I don't remember. Yeah, it was. It's the 24 challenge one. So they tricked it. That's a little sneaky because I want the 12 and I want the 36 and the 24 just comes along with it. But what's 36? A freaking portal. Ah, uh, yeah. It's so cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool. But you know what's awesome about the first reward? It's multiple helmets. It's a helmet pack. I don't yeah. think they've ever done that before. I think that's so cool. You get a variety of options based on what you like. Oh, man, that is so cool. So cool. I think it's one of the best challenge rewards i've seen in a really really long time like all three again the the pet is like the only reason it's cool is because it was such a big part of like the heist release even though it meant nothing it was a big it was a big hype yeah yeah it really was but man the portal looks awesome the helmets look like i was actually really impressed with uh, the challenges this one so you said you didn't care and you do like you you are excited for heist we were talking about that in a previous episode like you do actually care it's just what it's bringing is you're going to play it anyway. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. I just was really impressed that the all three challenge, I haven't had many leagues in a while where I felt really pushed to want to do 36 challenges and I don't typically like them. So hopefully they're not as dickish as they have been in the past where you just have to play like (laughs) insane amount of hours and time. Uh, We'll see. I, I think it's awesome. We'll see. Cool. Yeah. So heist, what else, what else we got about heist? Well, I mean, there's the general high stuff. I mean, the, in general, it's coming out with 10 new skills, right? Supports and actives, um, a whole bunch of reworked ones, including both permanent and then the league specific uniques like the replicas. There's 118 new uniques this go around, 11 div cards. And we've talked about a few of them because there was some cool stuff going on prior to the release about some of them over eight hundred this is league specific over 800 alternate quality gems oh my goodness that's showing and a surprise vendor recipe for a special support gem what i oh, love that stuff love that stuff yeah i i i, yeah, okay. <laughs> I it's like it's so inflated 800 alternate quality that's not a lie there are it's just it's a lie it's just and, and 118 uniques, but that includes the replicas. So it is cool. I, I am really excited to play this you're, league. You're a I, Debbie Downer. You get out of here. That vendor no. recipe for a special support gem. What is it? I have to know. I can't wait. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to sell everything. I don't care what it is. I want that special support gem. Yeah. I'm, I imagine it won't take long for people to figure it out. Mm-hmm. It'll be on Reddit pretty quick. 
All right, so let's get into, I guess what, we'll start right off the bat. We're kind of following, if you're looking, if you ever look at the patch notes, we typically go through them in an, in a reasonable order, you know? Yeah. yeah. We don't jump all over the place, but we, you may all of a sudden be like, wait, what? They're down there? And that's just because, <laughs> that's yeah, just because that's we right. didn't care about also, a check. Also, if you're, um, if you want to know what heist is, uh, we're just talking about the patch notes, not saying what heist is. So that's, that's a couple episodes ago. It's called uh, like heist reveal or something. Enjoy. You know it. You know, it. if not, go back and listen to that and then come listen to this one. Yeah. Yeah. But not episode one. Not episode one. Uh, the major new content and the general changes overall. There's quite a few. Are there? Okay. I'm. Did you like these patch notes overall? Like we're going to get into them in detail. Yeah, I did. I'm a not lot. talking about the changes, but just in general, the way just the patch notes overall. I don't know if I entirely understand what you mean, but I really liked it. These patch notes in general were very specific. Well, see, we're on totally different pages then. Okay, because the there were, I mean, everything from ascendancies to gems and this and that, it, it focused on some a very specific theme or play style, and there's very little global changes. Besides, I mean, there were some, but not like other patch notes where it just seemed like there were global scales of stuff, and also we're changing this. I liked it. I just, I feel like they were, I actually felt that it was a little vague in some of the areas. Oh. And and that's not necessarily, I guess, just towards the, the patch notes, because you'll find out a little bit more once the gems come out. But I felt like there were actually instances where they weren't telling me the difference between before 312 and now with 312. And I thought in the past you there was more of that of being able to see like at a first glance what the difference is. Yeah. And I also I don't I don't like all the crap about like I feel like I'm just tired. I'm not tired. I'm annoyed when they say things like I'm trying to think of some of the specific wording that they use, but where they're not telling you how like what is near to me, what is I don't understand all the short versions of what times are. I just wish they would use a number like within four seconds, within six seconds. I don't like like recently. And and some of the changes were based on that. And I just go, I I don't know what that is. Yeah. Nearby is a really vague when they tried to explain it once. It just made it worse. Recently has always been four seconds, which is nice. But there are a few other terms. Yeah. Put four seconds in there. Yeah, it'd be nice. It seems like a dumb thing to just have to know. And like, I, I, I'm really looking forward to the one day where they have a patch note that says recently has now been changed to three seconds or whatever. Yeah. Or four space sec dot and you're saving characters. I don't know. It just seems weird to me. But anyway, let's get into it. So just really quick general changes. I know you have a couple things. You know, one of my favorite one was that they have new torches to light your way to Lion's Eye Watch. Yeah. I, Not for your hideout yet, though. Uh, it's all right. It's a step in the right direction. That's I don't right. think it is. It's, no, it's like being an alcoholic and just getting to AA. That's what this is. We're there. We're almost there. Now you just need to go through the 12 extra steps. They just keep teasing us. They're like, hey, look, guys, we can do it here. <laughs> oh, and we can do it here. <laughs> That's right. But you can't do it over there. <laughs> Not in your hideout. No, no, no. All right. What are your overall changes that you like? Well, I'm impressed. They they listed a lot. I'm not going to get into them, but there are a lot of quality of life improvements all the way to how the crafting bench functions, uh, music, tons of stuff. Bloom, like it's all over the map. And you could see the huge amount of quality of life that they added with the patch that's already been released where you had to re-download the entire game. Just Have you loaded the game since that? Yeah, I did intentionally. Yeah. I actually found it was di- quite a bit different looking. There was a patch right after it. And I'm like, oh, great. Because I forgot about the big download. And I'm like, oh, man, I just want to try this skill out. And I'm like, stupid steam. And bloop, Instantly. it loaded. Yeah, what's <laughs> yeah. up? What's up? So it was good. But yeah, lots of quality of life improvements all across the board. Um, one that's, I mean, many stood out to me. But just so this isn't a three-hour podcast. One that stood out was when you use an in-area transition, like going into a boss room or something. So when you go through a door, but it doesn't show you a loading screen. There's actually a short cooldown now, so you can't accidentally, for the click-happy players, you can't accidentally go back go out. back out of that boss arena or whatever it is. And I, I, I thought that was, I, that's great. That's great. I mean, I'm not click-happy, but. I hope it counts towards portals as well, because it sucks to quickly enter in. And I'm, I've done it before, and you're like, ah, damn it. One portal down. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It is a sweet change, though. I like it. Did you see the projectiles um, behavior getting reworked? Did you notice that? Projectiles. Yeah, I did see the changes. What do you think of them? But anyway, now it um, before 
I guess like there's a sequence of orders that the different types of mechanics that a projectile can go through um, before if you if it skipped one of those behaviors it wouldn't go back and check for that behavior again but now it's going to recheck the new order of how projectiles work every single enemy so that's cool because now you're not going to get stuck in a thing where if you're relying on one of the many specific mechanics that a projectile can do like fork or chain you're not going to miss out on it. It's going to be recalculated every enemy. So I thought that was that was cool to actually point out, say, hey, it was an issue before. You know, there's a lot of humility in these patch notes. And I that's one of the million things I love about GGG is that they're not scared to say, you know, hey, this was an issue before. Thank goodness it's fixed. And one of the huge things, though, the reduced visibility to enemies. I don't know how often you played with it or focused on it. I loved it with phase run, but it's gone. And they just call it it's stealth very weird. now. Yeah, stealth. Yeah, so reduced visibility is just gone. It doesn't make any sense. And now there's this thing called stealth. Maybe it was in the game before. I didn't really pay attention. But increasing your stealth reduces the radius that enemies see you. So it's not just no matter where you are, they can't see you. It's not like a chance that they can or can't see you. It's just now it's a radius. And stealth impacts the radius that enemies can see you at. So I thought that was pretty neat. And I mean, we'll get into it later, but a lot of everything that had reduced visibility is now gone and replaced with whatever value of stealth. I feel like it's an interesting change. I was reading it and then I had to go back and reread it as I was reading phase run. Um, maybe a POE2 thing, because I don't see it really applying to much else. I didn't see anything else through the patch notes that were like, this is a new stealth benefit oh, or mechanic okay. you know what i mean like nothing in the tree nothing in the skills it seemed like a weird change i didn't notice if stealth was in the tree or not there were definitely items that changed with it um mods and uniques yeah but i'm just curious why like i feel like there's got to be something bigger maybe planned down the road because oh, it just seemed like an odd change I i'm fine with it you got you need a stealth ascendancy it's gonna happen it's a ninja the ninja how do you not have a ninja already right right it's true it's probably going to be on the opposite side of the tree as pirate minions so there is a lot of skill changes and this is i mean this is usually our favorite part your notes are huge on this section That's i awesome. know aren't you impressed it's not normally the case normally yours is exactly what it is which is just a book and a half uh but let's i don't know we'll just keep interrupting each other and start with them i blazing salvo was my first one i saw because it was up at the top you have to start the league with it. You just can't stop talking about it. You get it after you kill Mervale. See, you already know. Mervale. Oh, I heard. <laughs> but you know what? Maybe she's French and the L is silent. Maybe it's Mervale. Do you want to know what? Before I responded, this has nothing to do with patch notes. But before I responded to the person calling you out for that, I actually went back in game to find out how Doreso says her name uh, to make sure that I wasn't wrong. Because I was like, I don't want to be like, yeah, Tyler's an idiot. And then all of a sudden be like, well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, you get Blazing Salvo, I think, uh, on her quest. So wait, it uh, isn't Merve? It's Mervel? Mer Mervel? Mervel? No, it's like Merve. He says it with an L. You hear the L. So it's not Merve, I'm sorry to tell you. Well, maybe he doesn't know how to say his lover's name. Anyway, go on. Blazing anyway, Salvo. I, it, I don't know. You get it relatively early. So I think it's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. Are they, again, until you see the skills, it's really hard to see it. You get it early. It looks cool. I like how it attacks. It's kind of weird to me. Well, it's kind of cool. The further back, the bigger the area and the closer that, you know, like, like you can hit multiple times. I think it's fun. <laughs> that's, that's a good description. Everybody's really excited by your promo. Great job. Flame wall. You get it almost right off the bat. That's cool. I know. Cracking eggs right off the bat. I love that. Love that. Yeah. Zombies. I'm just saying that's when you get zombies. Oh, I don't think they benefit with flame wall. No, 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 no. I'm just saying you get them early. <laughs> that so would awesome. be cool if zombies ran through the flame wall. And then they would start on fire. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah, that's coming. 3.13. All right. What else do you like? Man, I have a whole list. Why don't All we right. just go back and forth? You tell me one. And if I got it, I'll talk about it. Coolest, coolest edition of the entire league with the exception, of course, of the entire curse rework. I've, I've talked about this many times. I don't remember if it was in a podcast or if it's every single time I play zombies on my broadcast, but permanent minions, so not just specters, permanent minions like golems, zombies, and animate guardians are now saved when you lock out and they're automatically resummoned when you log in. 
How awesome is that? I can't tell you how many times in my guides I've had to say like, and have a second desecrate unlinked, you know, over here just so that it's easy to summon your zombies, your 10 zombies when you come in. Anyway, anyway, it's a little weird that it took this long, but it's awesome that it's here. Totally agree and totally agree. Yeah, it's nice that it's there now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so did you, again, you get to read stuff, which is really cool. I really want to play with some of these skills, but Crackling Lance looks like a lot of fun. The heck, crackling lance so it deals lightning damage to enemies in an area in front of the caster repeated cast intensify the damage dealt and narrow the range of enemies it hits mm. I, it just sounds really cool it does sounds like it does a good aoe and then it really hones in for boss damage yeah and there's there's other skills and other supports that are coming out that uh benefit with it plus it's one of the easier ways to get um intensify up because now it's been changed to three stacks instead of four yeah. And you can get it through Crackling Lance. So I don't know. I, it looked fun. I, you haven't really seen anything because the video is a little hard to tell. Anytime they put the videos out, you're like, well, what else is going on here? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that just the skill or is there some other magic I don't know about? But I, I did like that one. That one looks like fun. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, speaking of Firestorm, goodness me, that looks I so cool. It. And when they, and, and you get your huge damage in AOE on the first hit, not at the end of the cast, but at the beginning of the cast. So I'm curious to see how it changes over time based on just casting it quickly based, or if there's going to be like a buildup associated to it later because it seems so crazy that you get that huge damage in AOE bonus at the beginning of the cast, not at the end with the extra meteors. Was there previously a, a cap on how many firestorms you could have because now it's three but i couldn't remember if there was one before no there wasn't and that was the huge glory that i loved about firestorm you increase the duration of firestorm and it's and it's aoe and you could have so many different firestorms lapping i mean it used to be a two second duration just non-stop 10 hits per second i mean in different areas but 10 hits per second and you could have as many as you wanted if you got it to last for five seconds oh boy so they had a new skill gem called Sigil of Power. Did you see that one? Yeah. That one's I'm kind of interesting. Creates an area, causes your skills to consume more mana, but deal added lightning damage while you stand in it. Yeah. I, it's really hard without knowing numbers because I don't think there was any details to that one. Like, you know, when you say consumes more mana, what? How much? <laughs> <laughs> just, just get clarity going and away you go. Pew, 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 pew. Yeah. Maybe it will help out Archmage. Maybe, maybe, maybe. It kind of took a bit of a beating this this league. I don't know. It just seemed cool. I, I, I'm I not a big fan of the whole, like, here's my spot to stand in. Right? We talked about that before. I'm not. Yeah. That doesn't tend to work except on maybe boss fights. Oh, please. You just don't know how to play the game. And there's lots of curse changes. So we're going to get into that. So just we'll get there. I already skipped the section so we could get it later. Okay. Vitality is probably one of the most exciting changes for me because I've... I. I've said it a hundred thousand times. It was such a waste of 35%. Within yep. two nodes, you could get that on the tree, right? Or even three per se travel nodes to a notable. Like it was, it was just such a waste. So good for them for changing it. I love that it reserves a flat amount of mana now, which is great. Mm -hmm. And it gives a flat amount of regen, just like the golem does. So I really think that's cool. They made it so that it's available at level 10 and they were specifically referencing Righteous Fire with it. So mm. I'm curious. I, I mean, obviously it's not going to cure Righteous Fire. You can't just load Righteous Fire if you have your <laughs> fire resistance maxed and put on Enduring or what is it? Uh, vitality at the same time. Not going to let you do it, but it's, it's sustained it anyway. But oh, I'm, I'm excited. Now, here's, here's the thing. I, I went and compared vitality at its level 20 will reserve 233 mana clarity reserves over 40 more 46 mana more that, that's a big deal that is a big deal when it's reserving flat amounts especially if you're doing flat amounts and you have no investment into mana that extra 40 can be a big deal when you're trying to accommodate other 35 percent auras so i'm excited for well, that plus with the reduced mana that's out on the tree that you can get and from gems and stuff uh and at really it's a reasonable amount of life per second to be getting for a pretty small mana. Yeah. For 233 mana 
at level 20, you get 247 life regen. And to me, that is, that's like a skill gem wearing lingerie. That's sexy. That's what that is. They also, with vitality and clarity, decreased the requirements. So with vitality, they decreased the strength requirement. And with clarity, they decreased the uh, intelligence, which is actually kind of nice because it makes it easier at a leveling experience to use them makes them more accommodating globally you don't have to be on the north side of the tree to accommodate clarity and uh i i I really like that i thought that was a very smart change okay so glacial cascade looks awesome it looks so good (laughs) everything i read through the notes i was like i literally on my notes right here it says i'm totally playing this this league that's awesome it just looks awesome like totems or mines yeah (laughs) <laughs> i'm doing it good for you I, that, that, uh, all i had to read it i was like okay this is it good for you i'm surprised it's not blazing salvo but or salvo but I, hey biggest biggest deal for glacial cascade is it's now 100 percent conversion 100 yep. percent conversion it's just that that makes so much sense they've done it with previous skills already like ice crash i'm excited for it so that's awesome everything about it made me happy yeah and and it just looks cool it is going to dominate my screen. We're finally able to play co-op and you're going to do this like insanely flashy skill by like the most dumbed down. I think there's um a vampiric or gore thing. I think I have it. Yeah. Skin. Yep. Use it so it's not bright. Okay. Okay. Good talk. Did you, did you notice or care about the enduring cry changes? Okay. I read it. I know. I assume people probably don't like it. It's fine. Like, okay. They increase the cooldown. The thing is, everybody took it. It did not make sense on almost any build not to take it. Unless you just wanted a one button build, it really didn't make sense to not take it. And if you were anywhere in the southwest side of the tree, like the bottom left side of the tree, you would be nuts not to take it. Right. The the eight seconds cooldown up from six and now you don't just get a guaranteed endurance charge. I'm totally fine with that. I... I think it's nuts. I think they should have changed the value of the skill instead of increase, like lowered the value of the skill instead of increasing the cooldown. An eight second cooldown in Path of Exile, I can charge Val skills faster than that. Like that's that's so crazy. It's basically there's no reason for the life regen for eight seconds. There's no reason for the, your life regen at that point. Uh, to me, I used it as like an oh shit. That's what it was used for. Yeah, but once every eight seconds, you can't. Like there's no way yeah. you're staring at that skill. You're hitting it and it's either up or it's not. You know what I mean? Like eight yeah. seconds to me in Path of Exile is an eternity. You may as well have changed something completely different to make it so that it still matches the same requirements as everything else. Like for me, for example, if I'm going to use Enduring Cry with a Righteous Fire build, I'm holding that button down and I'm not letting go. It should never be made to be a, a skill that could be used like that, though. I don't I would never want it to be like that. No, but there's no other way I'm using an eight second cooldown. There's no way I'm putting that into my build. Well, I think the big difference, though, for you is you don't you like the one button builds where you're just, you know, here's your skill. To me, I, I get it. Eight seconds sucks. But to, to me, it's a really good oh crap skill. That's I think that's primarily what I used it for in our whole hardcore solo self found league. And it was awesome for that. Now I get it. It does suck that it's eight seconds now. The whole like not ga- gaining the endurance charge unless there's at least an enemy around. That I'm makes fine sense. With that. that makes sense yep. to me. I think the amount, I'm so surprised though that the life regen, the amount of life you get from that skill to me is insane. I'm surprised that didn't change and the cooldown did. So you would have rather seen a decrease to the health and maintaining the six seconds? I. It's an endure, It's it should have the same cooldown as every other war cry and you just change the value of it to be proportionate to how often it goes off to me eight seconds just makes zero sense in poe eight seconds is just crazy for me i don't feel like i needed it i, I don't know that i would notice that two seconds maybe i would but i love the oh crap skills i love having that on a button and just knowing that if i don't most of the time i have a flask up but if i didn't have like a you know a quick uh, regening or instant flask yeah that i could hit that and be fine i think the thing though is that how are you going to know it's up you're not staring at the skill you're not making sure it's up <laughs> yeah i think most people can look i don't 
The game's too fast. You get way too much damage. No way that you're actually looking to, be to, able see to see if it. your skills are up. No way. Yes. For the people that are actually using five active buttons, flasks, oh crap buttons, this is my skill, this is my secondary skill. No way. No way. Well, what difference does it make if you know if it's up or not? Because it takes so long. That means you're doing a lot of checking for a skill that's not up. No, but if you're saying that you're checking and there's a two second difference, are you choosing not to do something because it's not up yet? Like, okay, I'm not going to jump into that pack because it's not ready yet. Is that what you're saying? I don't know. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Like what if you're in the middle of a fight and it's your old crap button and you're like, oh man, like eight seconds just is a long it. time. I'm it just saying, I'm saying it's, it's just, six seconds is a long time too. I'm not sure that the two seconds, I get it. I don't know that I would have wanted it to be less. I love the fact that it is a really good, oh crap. That, that is what I actually like about it. Once an hour. Yeah. You're a big baby. You're next. Go. I actually liked it. Uh, ball lightning. They just keep punching it in the balls. They don't like ball lightning. They really <laughs> want to like tone down ball lightning. I played it last uh, i played it yeah in harvest that was in my that was like my first character which i had i think i maybe started playing in the league before i can't remember but it was still good now they're just like uh it's still a little too good let's just let's just beat it down a little bit more i i don't get it i don't really understand some of their changes and we'll talk about them later as they come up but i i don't know that ball lightning was so overpowered but anyway they thought so well you you had a extremely powerful build and you had very little End defense game. except for knockback and well the knockback was just by fluke through a uh through a, a jewel but I, I don't know i I didn't think it was like so over the top like they've decreased the radius again and then decreased the damage all the way up from one through 20 so i think I it was think in the like dev it. manifesto yeah it was the dev manifesto where they said it when you compare when you added linked uh, sorry, when you linked slower projectiles, it was just overpowered like crazy. And you can't change slower projectiles because of one skill. You got to change that one skill. They said the exact same thing at the beginning of Harvest. That was part of the 3.11 patch notes was ball lightning linked with slower projectiles was causing a problem. Yeah. And the hard thing about those types of skills when it's lightning skills is you're dropping that high damage. And that's that's a big deal because there's such a huge variance between the possible base hit and the possible high hit like that's it's dangerous territory i mean they know what they're doing in terms of their numbers i'm curious to see how it how it comes out i feel like i'll still do it like if i decide to go glacial cascade with mines or something i still see myself leveling with ball lightning yeah yeah because it does still work fine but anyway i just i feel like somebody at ggg does not like ball lightning (laughs) (laughs) somebody's got it in for them I think I already brought up phase run doesn't reduce visibility anymore. It's a stealth based skill. Um, so I'll skip on to death mark. Now, normally if a, a gem changed its name, I would barely bring it up, but it's minions. So I'm going to talk about it for an hour. Death mark and the buff that it provides were completely renamed, but not because there's any changes to the skill, just because they added marks to the game as a type of curse. So, so death mark isn't considered a mark. They changed the name of death mark to predator. And it applies the signal prey buff. So now if you ever see signal prey or predator, oh man, and I'm a I'm a huge aliens and predator and aliens versus predator and Prometheus fan. So that works out great. That works out great. I approve. Yeah, I, I don't actually care about Deathmark. I'm curious though, you skipped over phase one really quick. Does that change change anything for you? Because it doesn't for me. I would still use it. And I, I, especially for heist, I feel like it's going to have a really big benefit in heist. My favorite thing about phase run is that it's a spell. I can attach it to a low level cast and damage take. And so phase run will be level three. It requires very little decks at that level. And it was really good if, when you use it as an immediate getaway skill because right away your visibility was reduced. I mean, the phasing is obviously awesome. The increased movement speed, it all just gels really well together. Having reduced visibility just means that you're not, you can still get hit right away once it goes off. But you're, I mean, the whole point of the skill for me in my play style is I'm running away. So when it goes off, I'm trying to sprint away. So for me now with the new phase run, when it goes off, my hope is that I'm going to be far enough away pretty quick. I don't know how much I didn't, I don't remember if it was mentioned how much stealth you get from phase run now, but 
I'm excited for it. Why? 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 In, in classic GGG terms, it's your basic is like just straight up what you get from phase run is 100% increased stealth, which cuts the radius in half. Thank you for that information. I have no idea what that means. And uh, you can, I don't know if it's quality or if it's just leveling gets it to 200% increased stealth, which cuts the radius by two thirds. Again, I don't know what that means. I have no idea how far that is. I, that's the stuff that just drives me crazy. Cause I, is that better? I don't know if that's better. I assume it is. It well, yeah, but the I mean, you can't give a radius number because every enemy has a different visual radius. That's a that's a monster number, so you can't you can't give it. What's the radius specific. from you though? But it's still based on how the enemy can see you. So if an enemy, I mean, who knows what the units are, but let's say an enemy, a melee enemy has a a visual range of 20, okay, now it's getting cut down to 10 or if it's one of those crazy ribbons that has a 300 range. Now it's getting cut down to 150. Do you think that's so. how it is? That it, this is cutting down the radius of the enemy or it's cutting down yeah. what your radius is around you? Because I see it as the radius around me. Oh, well, I'd have to reread it. Um, but I read it as the enemy's visual radius. So when it's applied, maybe not. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. I, I have no idea. Like I said, the wording is not the greatest. I still think it'll be good. Yeah. But I don't know what that means. I still prefer it over withering step or wither step, whatever it's called. I like the reduced visibility slash stealth. Did you see the spell slinger changes? Yeah, yeah, I did. What do you think? Go on. I don't like it at all. Why? All right. So my problem with it is when you're using it at max level, fine. You can maybe say that there's a benefit, but the increase to mana reservation is really, really dumb. At the beginning, it actually all the way up to level twenty. It should have it should have gone okay. Fine, you have a higher mana reservation at level one, but at level twenty, it goes to the same mana reservation that it was before twenty percent. They've upped it to twenty five percent, so it's going like thirty to twenty five. I think from level one to twenty, it was it was a great skill for leveling. Like I get that people used it, but a lot of people shifted out of it once they got into end game because it didn't actually scale super well in higher tier maps and higher tier content. I, I just don't understand why, like this kind of goes into a conversation we've had before. I'm not going to rehash it, but the whole concept of just leveling sucks and people don't want to do it. And spell slinger was a really good way to level. Yeah. And GGG is like, no, <laughs> I just don't like that. Like I, people want to level quickly. They want to get to maps again. I don't want to rehash that whole conversation, but this to me just seems dumb. Yeah. Well, you, you still have to keep it balanced. And if it's overpowered compared to everything else, you got to either choose if everything's going to be overpowered for leveling or if everything's going to be balanced for leveling. So I think right now, until they change that mentality, it it's needs to be balanced for it. The one thing I really don't like, though, I really don't like changing mana reservation. It makes sense on every skill like the new vitality precision clarity that makes sense you know that's the design of it but this is the only other skill where it actually get is big and then it's reduced it doesn't i don't i don't get it like basically the way that it how it should be is when all the auras unlock in act three it should be at its base reservation so you can get your build going but i i think it's weird weird that it, what i would do is i would just increase the cooldown for your skill. So you can't use it too often, but either way, I, I, I like what they did in terms of like the end game result. It's roughly the same. It just, for some reason, it, because it was overpowered, they decided to change the mana reservation of it while you're leveling. Yeah. The problem was the problem in my opinion though, is it wasn't overpowered end game. And if something's overpowered for leveling, I think you just leave that I, I, personally because leveling already is stupid. Uh, so if something, if, in my opinion, if something is easier to use for leveling because what were you talking about with regards to the cooldown they did increase it they actually made it 0.1 seconds longer that's not a buff no i know that so that's a negative and then all they've done is the cooldown recovery rate is now uh, 38 percent instead of 19 at, at uh, full level which is fine it's just that it wasn't super popular full level people weren't playing it all the way till the level 20 they were using it as a really good way to level up yeah. And by changing the mana reservation to be higher all across the board, I just don't like it. If if something's good for leveling, just leave it good for leveling. 
But then it's the only skill that people level with. Totally fine with that. Give me one skill that I can just level with to get to maps faster, especially if you can make it suck. Just make it absolutely terrible by the time I hit 60. Like the scaling just literally drops off. I don't see the negative side of that. Uh, it, you need to accommodate every type of player and there shouldn't, they never want their, they never want a go-to skill. Yeah. I just, I feel like if something is good for leveling, they want to smack it down. I just don't like it. So that was my, that was my issue with Spellslinger. I didn't like the change. I get that a lot of people were using it, but I'm not sure that that's always a bad thing, especially because they're not giving us any other way to level. You still got to go act one through 10. I think overall the spell slinger was a good change with the exception of the pers- the mana reservation percentage changing. Uh, to me, that's screwy when you're trying to get a build set up. But besides that, I think if it's... I, 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 I think they know what they're doing. Yeah. And it'll be fine later on. Uh, we talked about intensify, right? I think I criticized, or not criticized it, but I was nervous about it because I already thought it was a really strong skill. But now Intensify is stronger. You can get to its peak damage faster. And it has a lesser AoE than it did, so it's definitely concentrated. And it takes fast and it takes faster to get there than the old version. So it's less standing around and it's a lot stronger. So nice work. I eat my words from the previous episode. I'm fine with that one. Uh, what was... But uh, this isn't really a skill. This is more like a tree with uh, glancing blows. Well, then let's leave it for the tree section. No, I'm going to bring it up. I already said it. All right. I'm bringing it up later, too. Did you like the change? Because I thought it was... I know that... It, we actually talked about this literally today while you were yeah, at my house. Yeah, you're We were talking stuff. about the glancing blows. We knew it was coming, that there was going to be some sort of nerf to it. I am fine with it. I'm fine with the fact that it's now 65%. I feel like... I mentioned to you today, I feel like they kind of are making it a little bit more of a benefit now to go into a real block character or maybe something to think about. It's not just a guarantee that if you're in the area, grab it because it's stupidly easy and it, a ton of defense. I don't like them moving it though. I, they didn't say where. Yeah, that we have to see where they moved it. It would make sense in a blocking land to be farther south. It was pretty far north. But at the same time, do you want something that powerful? <laughs> to me, when you're doing a max block build, you don't really want glancing blows because you're taking so much damage. Even when it was at a 50%, that's not like that's still a lot of damage when you're expecting to take zero. So to for it to be for you to to block 35% damage still or to not take, that's huge. That is so much stronger than fortify so much stronger still it makes so much sense and i don't know especially when you can so easily couple it with four to five through so many different methods i i think it's a really good balance i'm just very curious where they put it on the tree very interested skill wise i'm good to hit into curses because and auras i guess i don't know I'm, i kind of have some for both so what else you got i have one more did i did i say how awesome it is that zombies are now going to be re resummoned i know i did but i want to say it again zombies get resummoned just automatically just because because they're zombie lovers but specters right one thing i love about specters is that you have an infinite amount of options there's so many cool ways you can apply them to your build as secondary or main damage minions last league was the most annoying league for specters because there was one specter it was they were called redemption sentries and or redemption knights depending on which version you went with i'm glad they changed i know there's going to be a lot of people that love that build and they're going to be super pissed goodness me when when you have a game like path of exile and you're only talking about one out of the 500 different enemies you can res for specters they're going to make a change i'm glad they did uh the change was very easy to understand 33% less life and damage for both those minions it was necessary yeah, it, you are right. If you're if the game is talking, if the player base is talking about one, yep. it needs something. If they're talking about like five different ones, I'm fine with that because it's never going to be even. They're never going to have like all of the potential specters being the same strength. Right. But it shouldn't be one is like way up here and everybody else is down here. I agree. You can't have everybody leveling with spell slinger. That's for sure. Shut so, your face. <laughs> oh, you're going to make me cough. Stupid smoke in the area. Hey, we had a blue sky today. Did you see it? Barely through the smoke. Yeah, my grass is loving it. This is not a grass stream right now, Tyler. No, I know. We'll do that next episode 47, grass special. Don't worry, grass is coming. (laughs) Sponsored by Scott's. (laughs) Huge curse league. Well, I mean, reasonable. (laughs) (laughs) 
This is that like this is uh, curses are one of my two favorite things in the game. I just freaking love them. And I was I mentioned in the previous episode or two, I was so nervous about these changes, but now that the dev manifesto or article came out specifically regarding curses and now we've seen the numbers, oh my goodness, I love it. But they've added so much more to the tree. I'm really nervous. It's going to take me forever. None of my guides are getting out on time. Do you like all of these? All of these changes for curses? Yes. Huh. Yes. Yes, I do. All right. Yes, I do. I, there's something wrong with you. No, there but isn't. That's fine. No, there isn't. There's nothing wrong with any of these changes. What's wrong with them? Let's get in. Well, let's get into them. Okay. Additions, additions to the number of curses you inflict on enemies are now cumulative to both hexes and marks. So they don't modify the number of enemies you can have marked at any given time. So in other words, remember this conversation we had last episode, you can have an enemy affected by both a mark and a hex. Awesome. How is that? Oh, so good. You can go up to a boss, have them in temporal chains or flammability or whatever, and also smack them with Warlord Mark, Warlord's Mark. That's so cool. Except, but additional curses, well, additional... Yeah, additional curses inflicted only benefits additional hexes. So you you can still only ever have one mark and and one hex. But they're separate, they're separate limitations. Now, now I'm curious, they didn't mention anything about increasing mark counts. I don't know if you'll be able to or not, but they still have, you know, increasing your hex amount. So it says on there you can't mark an enemy with two marks. Nor can you mark two different enemies. Right. But we don't know what exceptions there. There's always going to be exceptions, whether they're uniques or maybe the ladder notable on the tree. Like Whispers of Doom now is only applied to hexes, right? Maybe there'll be another one. Maybe there'll be a keystone or a sweet cluster jewel that hasn't existed yet. So anyway, um, so if you're looking around on the tree, items and enemies, which previously reflected curses, they now only reflect hexes. You can't reflect a mark. I just want to double check. The way they word it, additions to the number of curses you can inflict on enemies applies cumulatively to both hexes and marks, but do not modify the number of enemies you can have marked at any given time. So are you saying that at a brand new character with nothing, no special things in the tree, no special items, you can have one hex and one mark? That's what it says. It says, the very next sentence says, thus, you can have an enemy that is affected by both a mark and a hex, but you can't have two marks on an enemy. So it's saying right away, you can't have two marks, but you can do a hex and a mark. So it does imply to me that they are separate counters and separate maximums. So you're, it, I just feel like the wording, maybe it's just me being an idiot, are not super clear that I can have right off the bat one hex and one mark. It's not, it's not 100% clear, but that is the impression that I get. I mean, it, it does say that you can't have two marks, and it does... We, they still said that any like changes to curses are typically going to be applied to hexes now. They reference Whispers of Doom, which we'll get into in a second. So I am, they, and they are keeping the curse tag and then also having marks and hexes. So we'll have to see how it plays out, um, especially once we read what the Whispers of Doom notable is. If it still says curses, then that'll answer some questions. If it's specific to hexes, then we'll find out. If you, okay, I, I, again, I'm, I hate this wording. It's the same thing I've talked about before. And again, that's just me being an idiot. If you can't have right by default, one hex and one mark with no investment into anything, if you can't, do you think that's still a good change? Cause I, I don't, if you, if, 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 if one curse means you can have, it's kind of weird. Cause the wording is actually really hard to understand in my head, but if you can't have a hex and a mark right off the bat. Well, it, it doesn't it doesn't change anything because that's the way it was in 311. So it if you were thinking of playing the same style, it doesn't change anything, with the exception of marks only applying to one person now. Which is also a huge deal. It is a very big difference. So it depends on how they're applied. Yeah. How how you can go about applying it because it's a very specific click just for a debuff. And then you're doing your main skill as well, no matter what it is. So we'll have to see how it plays out. We'll have to see, play around with it for, for some time. But yeah, I mean, I have my assumptions, but like you said, it's not crystal obvious. 
Now only Crystal gems. Obvious. Crystal, I know, I know. I was, I was hoping <laughs> awesome. to move on quickly from that one, but you caught me. We'll forget that. Nothing. Thank you. Yeah, you'll edit that out, right? <laughs> only right. gems which are curses will now have the curse gem tag. Okay, so mm-hmm. only gems which are curses will have the curse gem. So all hexes and marks are going to have the curse tag. Skills that interact with hexes, like Bane, won't have the curse tag. They're going to have the type of curse tag. So Bane will have the hex tag because it only applies to hexes. Make sense? So there's going to be a lot of different tag changes. We'll reference a lot of other tagging changes that they've made as well. But that's uh, I thought that was pretty neat. One of my favorite ones, though, is flammability. Conductivity and Frostbite, like the three basic damage ones, they all now have a flat percentage, no matter the level. So it's really cool if you're an ailment fan, they have a flat 25% chance to cause their ailment, no matter the level. So there's still like, you'll still have the negative resists applied to them as they level up. But even if it's level one, if all you care about is igniting or chilling or what's the other one? Shocking. It's, you could have it at level one. Pew, pew, pew. For you, for curses, though, like this whole doom change, I feel like you're not really going to experience that at all, right? Because you use blasphemy for pretty much all of them. I, yeah, yeah. Or I'm looking for the negative resists. I want the damage buff. I'm not, the doom, the doom thing is really cool and it's not a criticism to it at all. It's, it just doesn't interest me right now. I'm a minion fan and I won't be applying doom to anything. I, I, yeah, I, I'm not, I don't have a ton of opinion on curses. I'll definitely play with them. They do look really cool. Marks to me are a little, e. I, I don't know. I'm not like you can't use curse on hit with them anymore. That's and right. And you, you can use the items and like rings and stuff, but it's different because they only apply to rare and unique enemies now. So you That's can't right. apply it to just general mobs. I don't know. They're, they've changed it so much with assassins, poachers, and warlord. There was actually one and thing with, with, well, yeah, that's the projectile. Yeah, you're right. But I'm just speci- specifically speaking about those three just because they were the ones I tended to go with because you're getting like some sort of regen or something out of them. Um, I'm assuming this is just a like a edited mistake or something with Warlord's Mark, but it doesn't actually state that you get an endurance charge in the points form of of it. So it says like it will always grant an endurance charge when slain. But in Poacher's Mark and Assassin's Mark, it's actually one of the points like cursed enemies now have a 100% chance to grant power charge or frenzy charge, but they didn't put that into Warlord's Mark. So I'm hoping that's just a like a mistype. Well, that's a good observation. I would assume that it's still there. It wouldn't make sense to exclude a charge from that perspective. Yeah, I, I feel like Mark's for me is going to be way different. Yeah, it, like I feel like a lot of this actually changes up how I would play a, a number of builds. The curses, I'm kind of curious because I didn't often use blasphemy. I would use curse on hit. You're missing out, man. Blasphemy is where it's at. Even curse on hit is different with them. So, well, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm excited for my favorite two, of course, are Enfeeble and Temporal Chains. Now, Enfeeble did lose one of its huge defensive perks. It no longer protects against crits. So that's a big deal. I think that's really good, though. I like it. Obviously, it sucks as someone who uses it all the time, but general damage mitigation still exists and i think that makes sense so if you were going to get crit you're still negating a certain percentage of damage with the normal debuff that they're getting to include or give special consideration to crits was really strong so it makes sense that they got rid of the uh, crit protection but enfeeble and temporal chains have had their normal quality changed to increase gem effectiveness So it's not before it was only specific to one of the many perks that they had. Now it's just global gem effectiveness. So all the cool stuff that they do all improves slightly. And it's at, I think it was 0.5 per quality, 1% for every two quality. Anyway, really, really awesome. And, and this is the total opposite of what you were hoping would happen. Their AOE has increased by three self cast, of course, AOE, because the AOE, when you attach it to blasphemy is, uh, it's predetermined by blasphemy, not by the skill. So you don't really care about those ones yourself? Um, depends. If I'm going to be doing them with cast when damage taken, that AOE will apply. So that's nice. Now, we've referenced curse on hit a lot, and we should probably change that because now it's called hex touch because it doesn't apply to marks anymore. So curse on hit support is now hex touch support, which obviously only applies to hexes. 
Hex touch, no more curse on hit. Got to change my guide substantially. I am so curious how they hope you can apply a mark to an individual enemy when there's a big group. I just can't get over that. I said this in the last episode too. I just, it's already friggin' hard just to move your mouse and click on something. Now you're, because it's only on an individual and because it reapplies, you know, like if you, if you hit one of them, it, it then reapplies to that one and takes it off the other one. And you can't ever have more than one with it. And I don't know. I feel like they kind of, I don't know. Marks just don't seem super great in the way that I'm reading it so far. And maybe it'll be different when we play. Yeah. But I do like punishment mostly just because of the explodey. <laughs> it's nice that punishment got some love. Love it. Yeah. And it'll get a lot of attention because exploding chests were a big deal. So the fact that they can still make stuff explode will be pretty fun. Were there any other curses that you cared or liked the changes to? Bosses throw PUE. And monsters in the Azerite mine no longer reduce the effect of marks on them. I think that's actually really cool with regards to, because it used to be that they were useless uh, against like higher level bosses. And isn't it the same for curses? Well, yeah, like they were considered curses. And so rares, so normal magic rares and uniques all had their different value of how less effective curses were on them. So now bosses and rares, they're only... They only kind of reduce the effectiveness of her, of hexes now, not of curses. Or sorry, not of this is gonna gonna screw a lot of people up. They're only they only mitigate the value of hexes, not marks. Oh man, this is gonna be a rough one for me. I gotta I'm gonna have to reread my guides like eight times. I like the uh, some of the wordings for them is hilarious. Items and enemies which previously reflected curses will now only reflect hexes. <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> I just think it's tough. reading through it. It's like, all right, I got to take notes. That's oh, well, which one is. Imagine the person writing this and proofreading this. Oh my goodness, I'm sure they screwed it up a hundred times. This one's actually really cool. This is a huge change for certain unique players. Hexproof monsters are still cursed, but they're ignoring the effect of hexes. Previously, hex-proofed ones were never were never cursed, right? Just wouldn't happen. But now depending on the perks you have for cursing somebody, like for example, the occultist, I, it doesn't, uh, we're going to get into ascendancy changes soon, but the occultist wasn't touched. So when you have like, when you're killing a cursed enemy, that's so cool because even if you're playing a hex proof map, which I guess in that regards, it doesn't matter. But when you're playing a hex proof map, you're still actually cursing an enemy. So you can get the damage bonus for curse for killing a cursed enemy, but the curse wasn't doing anything to them. So I love that change. It's really cool that there's still, it, that that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like a hex proof monster is still cursed, but they're laughing it off. Yep. I, I think overall the skills and changes they made are cool to see. I'm excited to see how they play out. I, there's a few I really, 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 really don't like, but you know, overall I'm mostly excited about glacial cascade. Yeah. I'm surprised. I don't, I don't, I don't care about anything else. I'm surprised it's taken over blazing salvo for you. Well, I told you when we talked about it, I don't like to play new skills, but I typically like to play rework skills. That being said, I, I, when I was reading through it and I was reading some of the curses, because my hope was maybe to play something curse wise that was actually doing the damage. I'm not overly impressed with curses. They're just kind of meh to me. Well, just wait till you see the doom numbers. Yeah. Doom might surprise you when the gem, maybe. gem skills come out. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, let's get into the passive tree. I can't believe how small this section is. Normally it's huge. Now there are going to be big changes, but it was able to be like the ascendancies. It was nothing. I couldn't believe it. I'm always expecting surprise ascendancy changes. And there was two, three, technically three ascendancies that were changed, but it was so small. Assassin. Well, two of them are the same thing, literally. Right, right. So assassin had, if you're familiar with assassin, deadly infusion and the node leading to it were cut down a little bit. Nothing much. Consider it a balance, right? Not a nerf. It's well, a it's, balance. It's, it's a bit. Yeah, it is. But it's a balance, Justin. It's not a nerf. And then... It is a nerf. <laughs> no, a nerf is like a soul-crushing, we hate you. No, a nerf is when something's reduced. I don't think it matters by no, how much. No, nerf is like... That's like saying hate when you actually like somebody. A nerf... Nerf is a no. strong word. Nerf's a strong word. Also, um, nerf is kind of like pogs. Nerf is like those little guns you had with no, like this one. We got to disagree. Nerf pew, makes pew, sense. Pew, pew. Go long. Go real long. 
Remember that with the with the Nerf football, and they had the like little notches that helped you make deadly it infusion was a Nerf. Go ahead. Yep, and then the what's it called? Uh, Mistress of Sacrifice, I think it's called the Necromancer Notable or Keystone, whatever they call it. A long time ago, it made offerings apply to you, which is awesome, but at a fifty percent reduced value. I think it was 3.9 when they were really buffing minions. They changed that to only a 25% reduced value. So that was super strong. It was awesome for all three different offering skills, which I'm surprised there's still only three. But now, I guess with glancing blows and a few other things and all the different additions, they've reintroduced the 50% reduced value. So as a result, they've also changed the Ascendant Necromancer node or keystone to reflect the same change. I'm, I'm a little curious why. They went back to the 50%. Like I get that every a lot of people are using it, but they've also gone through and nerfed some of the stuff that was, you know, really pushing people to go specters or to, you know, play a certain way. It's kind of weird to do this one too. Yeah. Like they really don't want to see as many necromancers <laughs> <laughs> in POE Ninja at the top again. Well, you know what's funny though? I do really like the current necromancer setup. Um, it has for what you would picture a necromancer to be, you know, with corpses and minions like that, it makes sense for what it is compared to what it was pre 3.9 or whenever that change was. Now, for me, I don't mind this change because I always forgot that Mistress of Sacrifice was changed, right? So I was always playing and making my builds around a 50% reduction anyway. So to me, Okay, great. It feels like home, but uh, I can see, especially if you were revolving around that really big block chance, for example, with glancing blows or whatever it is, I, c- I can see it being a big deal. Last minute changes for your guides, but I, I think it's good. It feels like a pretty heavy handed, uh, like maybe, I don't know, maybe I don't know all the numbers they see, but it just seems like a, a little heavy. Like if they thought it was so much and they were still going to nerf other things, they're nerfing glancing blows, they're nerfing uh, specters. Why not maybe just maybe not do the whole way back to what it was before. Yeah. I, I don't know. Again, I don't know what the numbers are, but it just seemed a little heavy handed. I don't like necromancers anyway, though. So <laughs> <laughs> to, to me, 50% makes sense. Those offering skills are really strong and their base values are really strong. Like when you have, I think it's a level eight offering can be cast with cast when damage taken level one that's the the values they have it doesn't really increase substantially its base value is really high for all three of them so uh, to me 50 percent makes sense like no matter what it was at any point 50 percent really makes a lot of sense to me whether you're basing on attack speed or cast speed uh, block chance whatever the offering is it, it makes sense uh, yeah I'm, i would maybe agree with you more if it was a notable or a keystone on the tree not an ascendancy point you know, like ascendancy true, points true. are supposed to be pretty, I don't know, not necessarily build defining, but you do want them to feel like they're making a big difference. And I'm not saying that 50% doesn't make a big difference because it is still something. Yeah. It just feels like a bit heavy for a, an ascendancy change. Well, it also does other things though too, right? Like it, your offering skills affect you and it's at a 50% reduced value. So like the pro and the con, but it also increases skill effect duration and minion duration by 30% each. So if you're using a minion duration skill, that's additive. I mean, again, that's only if you're using a minion duration skill. So if you were using something that wasn't minion for that, you're only getting a 30% increased skill effect duration, which isn't, to me, keystone worthy, but maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe there's just stuff we don't know. Yeah, I just, I I mean, again, I don't really know. I'm not a big fan of Necromancer, but Mistress of Sacrifice to me is focused around the you get the benefit of the offering and it just has a reduced effect on you. Like, I, I'm not sure that people really care so much about, I mean, maybe increased skill effect duration. I have no idea about increased minion duration, but I think the m- biggest benefit of Mistress of Sacrifice is exactly what they nerfed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the duration on a side note is really good for five second base for SRS, right? It only lasts for five seconds. So skill duration is huge for that skill. I know, I know, but it's awesome. And one day it will be 100% fire conversion and they will say that it's a fire skill gem, but also something like animate weapon. 
it can really benefit from that with health. Uh, the skeletons, especially with valve skeletons. Oh my goodness. It's so cool. Anyway, anyway, I'm not arguing that those aren't good. I just think most people go mistress of sacrifice for the offering skill. 100%. And, and when it's a ascendancy change, maybe 25% isn't the end of the world. I don't know. Like I said, I haven't played necromancer in a long time, but it just feels really heavy when you're doing these other things as well. I'm still, depending on where Glancing Blows is, I'm still planning on using Mistress of Sacrifice with Bone Offering, with Glancing Blows, if I can reach it. If it's gone even further south, oh my God, I want to see your tree. I mean, goodness me, if it's farther south, that's not going to matter to anybody using the Baron. They're already going south anyway. Now, it's true. in terms of, um, there were a lot of different changes on the passive tree, but they were all referenced. I mean, a few keystones were a big deal. Uh, curses were the biggest manipulation and change. They have a lot of new different clusters. Uh, as previously mentioned, there's going to be some, especially for the marks down in the green area of the tree. Um, one keystone, a brand new one, it's called Doomsday. I'm only bringing it up because it's, you know, for the new mechanic, Doom. It causes hexes you cast to apply to an area, applying the hex to all enemies in it for its duration. And then kaboom. So it's you have kind of a doomsday keystone. Uh, we already mentioned glancing blows. It's officially, it used to reduce 50% of blocked damage. Or, sorry, if you blocked, it would you would receive 50% of the block damage. Now you receive 65% of the block damage, as we already talked. Now they said they moved it. They said they wanted it more difficult to acquire. Via the threat of hope. Right. Now, at, at this point, this was the first patch notes I've ever seen where it wasn't linked in an announcement. Normally, the announcement has, hey, here's your JSON data and your filter information, and here's your patch notes link. They didn't have that when we started recording. So hopefully the filter information comes out because I have stuff to do, yo. Uh, Whispers of Doom has moved along with a lot of other curse notables. Uh, all over the place. Apparently, Whispers of Doom, which was kind of in the northwest of the tree, now it's right beside Chaos Inoculation. Other gems have moved over to the other side, and it seems like there's like Doom and Curse Effectiveness. They kind of like the travel nodes to the notables. Those mechanics are kind of intertwined. I hope not, because all I care about is Curse Effectiveness, and I don't want to take... Uh, un unless there may be... Like combined, you know, like the the travel nodes will say, you know, 5% increased doom damage and 5% increased effectiveness. And if that's one node, that's worth it to me. So hopefully we'll have to see. We'll have to see. I'm excited for the tree to come out because I have stuff to do like a million other people do. Yeah, most of the tree changes seemed interesting if you're going, you know, if you're focusing on curses or yeah, a little bit on marks, maybe a little bit. We'll see how that is. But yeah, most of the changes were all around the same thing. I was like, boring. I, it, it, most of them were, there were still some, some generic ones, but I still couldn't believe that only three ascendancies got touched and barely to me. That's awesome. To me, that means that they're working really well. Hopefully. What about items? Want to move to items? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I don't care about any except the glacial cascade <laughs> well, one. <laughs> well, let me take a drink. Okay? So let me tell you about this one. Uh, it's just a new, because they're now you already have the hundred percent uh, conversion with glacial cascade the lab enchant doesn't make sense for that anymore so the new one gives you six or ten percent of physical damage as extra cold damage that's awesome that's a lot of damage that was a long drink and yeah that is a lot of damage they changed a lot of enchantments because there were a lot of curse skills they did a lot of skill revamps there's new skills so uh, definitely get into the patch notes. And if you're big into like making sure you're min maxed your character and you have your enchantments, get into the patch notes and control F your favorite skills just to be sure. There were a lot of enchant a lab enchantment changes, and we're not gonna list them, except for of course Glacial Cascade. Glacial Cascade, it's the only one you need to know. <laughs> I did like all of the modifier changes. I actually thought that was really cool in Harvest when they added the new modifiers that you could see when you like held alt over an item to see like a specific, you know, suffix or prefix, what its modifier tag was. I like that they're moving some of those now onto more fossils so you can do a little bit more focused crafting. Yeah. I, I actually don't really, it's not like I care in the end because I don't, I, I, I'd have to see them and I don't do a ton of fossil crafting because I don't do a ton of like crazy delving, but I really, really like when they show you more information. The more they can show you, I think the better. 
Agreed. Agreed. And there's sometimes when you, even you're at your crafting bench and you're like, wait, why can't I add this? What do you mean? That, that's not a duplicate mod. Like, why can't I? So maybe all the different item modifiers that they're adding and the different tags they're adding to mods. Harvest was bad for that. Was it? Harvest was, yeah, because you could put an item into the thing and it'd be like, you can't do that. They, there was no explanation as to why. It was just like, nope, none available. And it, it is common with the um, crafting bench until you just start memorizing what can or can't. There still isn't really an explanation as to why certain things are considered duplicate mods or not. And some because sometimes it seems like, oh, well, I'm not going to be able to craft that. That's a duplicate mod. And then you go in your crafting bench and you can. So hopefully it applies to some of that as well. Curse items like curse on hit, they no longer have a listed curse. So, you know, a lot of the times it'd be like, hey, curse enemies on hit with a level five vulnerability. Now it's not a level. It's just a listed as a value, right? So hit enemies with, with doom, an amount of doom. Well, with doom or with the curse, like it's it, it applies to both, right? It's a flat value for I don't know what what the value would be, but it'd be like this percentage of whatever the vulnerability stat is, and then it'll also include that value for doom, right? So it'll be kind of cool that you can have a per se curse on hit with doom or a hex on hit. I guess it is. What is it? Hex. Uh, well, I'm just going to read it. And again, this is another very lovely example of really well worded yeah, yeah. to make it make a lot of sense. So the items which apply a curse to an enemy with like curse on hit rings no longer specify a level and instead have a set magnitude for their values with a fixed amount of doom, which is overwritten when another source applies a more potent version. I, I understand the another source overwrites it. Yeah. A set magnitude for their values with a fixed amount of doom. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Eh. It's it says that it's going to give you a fixed amount and it's going to include doom with every single one. So you can understand that if I had a I don't know, a flammability or whatever that you would understand what the set magnitude for the value is? Well, it would say it'll be like -25% fire. Oh, you resistance. think it'll actually say the number on it? That's what I think, yeah. That's that's what I that's what I gather. We'll see if I'm right. The other one that's similar to that was the ones that used to trigger mark on hit, which is what we talked about before which is where I always loved to get a lot of these things on rings. Yeah. So I'm, I, this, I don't like, I, I, I'm, I'm marks all over the board and makes me a little bit nervous, but <laughs> taking it out now. So it's only rare and unique enemies. Right. So items that have the mark in them, instead of needing to equip the gem itself, if the item triggers a mark, it only applies to rares and uniques. So it was like cast assassins mark on hit or something, um, or sorry, curse, curse on hit. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm a little nervous. This is a very unique time to have a righteous fire guide, that's for sure, because of all the changes to Enduring Cry and Vitality. And now, with that, coupled with that, Life Regen was definitely something they focused on. Previously, Life Regen mods, especially the flat amounts, they were completely ignored. The percentage ones were pretty hard to get, especially the higher value ones, it, it, coupled with, you know, other good stats that were meaningful. So, Life regen mods are now way stronger and they're even double the value at the top tier mods, but they're a lot rarer now as well. Not rare as in yellow, but rare as in harder to find. Now you know. Yeah. Now what? What? It's good to know. It's good to know. I, I agree. I'm, I'm, I, I think it's exciting that there's going to be higher life regen, but when you're talking about like way more, it's besides double. them saying granting twice as much there's not much in here with regards to like i, I get it, you won't see it till we play but that's all it says is with the top tiers now granting twice as much life regeneration so who knows what the bottom tiers are doing because it actually says it's been increased across all but the first tier right which is awesome you know what though in my righteous fire guide i had a list of like you know my dream mods per se on an item life regen was always like the bear at the bottom like get it if it's there but definitely don't focus on it because it's not worth it like it's just you're just better off focusing on endurance charges or another another form you know what i mean so yeah i'm excited for it i'm i'm excited for the uh, life regen mod changes and we already talked about enchantments we already talked about reduced visibility oh items that had reduced visibility um they've all been oh i think we already talked about that but they've all been changed to stealth something like aspect of the cat you know what i mean i just love the wording now causes you to have 50 percent increased stealth well <laughs> you've told me 50 100 and 200 what the hell do they mean <laughs> two thirds one half what is 50 a quarter it's got yeah a third i don't know 
I don't understand. You can insert crickets here. Every time you bring up wording now, Doesn't you can make insert any sense. crickets. Cl four specific cluster jewel notables have been, I would say, reduced or balanced. You would say nerfed. Uh, so if you care about Eye care. of the Storm, shut your face. Precise Commander, Vengeful Commander, or Vicious Bite. Those four have been brought down in power a little bit, but it would be pretty awesome if there was a shut your face notable as well. They were all nerfs. I don't know how popular they were, <laughs> but they were all nerfs. All right. Unique items. They went from up to down. Good God. There's a lot of unique stuff. What? I was going to say it's the total opposite. It's like the smallest unique list that there's ever been. I'm actually going to go and be the Tyler right now because the list might be small in their patch notes, but they came out with like a billion new uniques. Yeah. So the unique items is actually monstrous. We don't even know what they all are. We don't know what all the replica uniques do. Well, yeah, but they do that. They never tell you what all the new uniques are. That's why I'm just saying unique items is huge. This league. It's not like it's just here's the list of the changes to uniques. They've also also introduced, as Tyler would say, a hundred plus new, not really uniques. We already touched that section. This is changed unique section. That's what this is. No, this is changed. Is it? Unique. That's funny. Yeah. It says unique items. I don't see changed uniques. Only a handful of unique items have changed this league. I almost feel lazy not listing them. Go on. I don't understand why you think this is a little. I think it's because you don't know anything about uniques, though. You don't like uniques. No, man. Normally in patch notes, the unique section that I skip is huge. I have to scroll for quite a while. Now, here's a really cool one. The Whispering Ice has actually been buffed up quite a lot. And it's I've cool. always, even though I'm not a unique I don't go out looking for uniques. Whispering Ice was always really cool for me. It's it's one of the most original unique items that I can think of. So anyway, it's been, I mean, some things have been increased, some things decreased. In my opinion, it's been buffed quite a lot. So check it out. If you've uh, been into Whispering Ice, you can still get it the same way. It's just better. Because of all the curse changes and aura changes and balancing other auras with the changes that have been made, Watcher's Eye has had some pretty substantial reworks with some of the stuff. So if you're always looking for a Watcher's Eye, control F Watcher's Eye in the patch notes as well. Whatever, Justin. Whatever. I think Gluttony looks cool. The change to Gluttony looks really cool. I will say if you were to look, I mean, they can't do it, but if you were to actually look at any league, I, don't, I would bet there's never been a league that has had more unique I don't know what you want to call them, but inserts to a league. New unique items is what you would call yeah. them. So, well, they might not have ones where they're like, here's the value because they just won't tell us what all these new ones are. Right. But I feel like this is one of the biggest leagues for unique changes. Normally Atlas stuff um, always gets revamped. There was, a, there was a really weird comment I've never heard before. Maybe it's very common and I just haven't come across it. It says map tiers and locations have been shuffled. Though the pin locations for maps has not changed. What? What's a pin location? I think that what they're meaning is the actual spot on the atlas where it appears. So the, the actual atlas will look the same, just different maps in different spots. Oh, yeah, that, that, that's what it means. So the physical circles are in the same place. Yeah, I'm not really sure why they had to specifically state that the pin locations for the maps haven't changed. But I, I feel like what it is, is the atlas is going to look identical. Just all the maps are like they do all the time, randomly. I never, I'm really curious what the thought is. Like what, what's the process of deciding which maps go where? I don't know. I, I mean, I get that for the players that play a billion hours that uh, an Atlas reshuffle is good. I, uh, it, it annoys me when I'm trying to get influence in an area and I can, I only have, I don't know, a couple possible maps, but the, you know, I can't get these maps because there's only three that I can get of this tier in that area and then everything. Yeah, I don't know. Are you talking standard or league? Well, it's the same map, the same atlas. But I really hope that the favorite, um, not the favorites, what are they called? Where you unlock specific stuff. What's it called? The hideouts. I really hope they're spread out. I hope they consider that because there's been some times where you would unlock four of the secret hideouts in one region and zero in a few others. And that was kind of annoying, especially when you're trying to favorite them to try and find them kind of wish that they would maybe either change the base type so that certain hideouts were always in certain regions and it was nicely spread out or that they would consider where those hideout unlocking out, uh, maps would be within the region and space them out. I like that they have improved signaling. Well, they said, I don't know what it means again, but improved signaling for advancing the quest step, uh, quest line step where Xana opens a portal. So 
I always found it weird that you could leave a map before entering Xana's portal and you won't unlock the crusader, whatever you want to oh, call it. Yeah, What's yeah, that thing yeah, called? Yeah. So I'm not sure what that means when they say they've improved signaling. Hopefully it like flashes in front of your face. Like when you fulfill a prophecy, like, Hey, enter here. <laughs> well, cause it is easy to miss when you have tutorials on at the very beginning right? Like what you're just finished killing Hillock. If you still have tutorials on, if you haven't chosen to skip tutorials, you can't enter Lion Eyes Watch without specking your first spec point or your passive point. Yep. They just completely, there's this big red wall. You can't go through, you can't click the gate. Be kind of, I mean. It, they should do that without requiring me to have yeah. uh, tips on or something. Or right. I don't know how you would do that because it does suck if you've played a long time, but still. Um, just noting to people like, hello, click here. Uh, did you see the Xana mods? Yes. Uh, okay. So I actually thought the fact that you could force delirium was cool until I saw that it, it was a 16 chaos cost. Have you ever seen what? anything that expensive as Xana mod? I don't, I don't think so. I actually don't know, but I don't, I felt like it was double what I've ever paid. I, uh, yeah, I think I've seen I feel eight. like eight's I the highest I've, I've ever eight, done. Right. Now, I guess Delirium is extremely strong. 16 seems huge. Like, are you getting your 16C return every map? Probably not. I don't think so. Especially when there's so many different cluster jewels you can get, which is the primary reason that and or delir um, Delirium orbs. But to me, this is 100% Fortune Favors fortune the Brave. Favor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm spending totally. three chaos and it's not Fortune Favors the Brave. It's Fortune Favors the Cheap. Yep. Well, it's also the just you know, fiscally responsible because three chaos orbs is reasonable. 16 is stupid, especially because blight is eight, eight chaos for blight. Blight, Yeah. Nah. It, but anytime you have that, anytime you have that, I I'm going fortune favors the brave. I'll get it sometimes. Cause you know, what's going to happen. I'm going to get more delirium maps going fortune favors the brave than yeah. buffing my maps. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so, this is I how mean, they decided to introduce right. it. <laughs> so I'm just spending three C and it's way cheaper than investing all of my chisels and all of my, well, plus you don't have to level Xena. Like you can, cause it can unlock, yeah. you can get ones that you've not unlocked. Yeah. So I'm, it's definitely worth it. Three C hands down. Now that's not a criticism. That's just what I'm going to do. No, 16 C is a criticism. Yeah. That's way too high. Fix that. Yeah. I feel like that was a mistake. Should be something else. <laughs> typo, <laughs> typo, yeah. So they did a bunch of changes to Blight, Incursion, and Delve. And I didn't care about any of them, except Blight was interesting. I'm I'm really curious why they all of a sudden were like, all right, we need to make Blight Towers like substantially stronger. I'm fine with it. It's just, I feel like it's a weird league to all of a sudden be like, all right, now's the time to increase Blight Tower strength. Well, yeah, maybe. Um I guess there's a lot of the changes they've done are to items and skills, not the game itself. So uh, one of my major criticisms to Blight is that you needed, it, it really funneled the types of skills that could be effective. You either needed an extreme glass cannon, right, to do the damage and wipe everybody out, or you had to have your strong AoE or minion character, right? Like your strike skills just had such a low, low chance, no matter what how much your damage was. So increasing the tower value um making the tower stronger makes sense for strike builds and those like especially now that you're i guess it is a good league because now you're thinking about the single target strike when you're adding marks to the build right to the game so maybe maybe it makes sense but now it gives as long as you're savvy with your towers right they also modified all the different like the power of all the different types of towers that you could do so there wasn't just one way whether it was slowing or stunning there wasn't just one way to beat, you know, to always have every single tower. So at least there's now a chance for all those strike characters. Would you rather trade all of those changes for can never branch more than two times? Yes. Because <laughs> I, no, I don't totally. care how many times it branches, but y you still need a funnel for it to break off in four directions right off the bat. That's what I mean. Like right off the first, it can only go in two directions. That's it. Use one of your vague units. Go 20 units with one before it can break into two or three or four. Give me a choke point. You'll never get the word units, Tyler. It will say it can go further or it can go <laughs> reduced distance. Further can be eight <laughs> units to 24 units, depending on the circumstance. No, but you know what? I hate the towers in the game. I remember it was Jonathan. I think he like I'm a huge tower defense fan. I was playing Plants vs. Zombies today. The first one it was pretty fun, but 
I love tower defense games, but I don't want them in this game. I don't want to click on them with my left analog stick by accident. I don't want to have to stop to think about what I'm doing and consider the monsters that are coming from whichever portal. To me, they don't belong in the game. So making them stronger, sure, it gives certain builds a chance. I'm still pretty apathetic to that mechanic in total. That's just me, though. That's not that's just me. I'm, there's a lot of people that love it. So they made a bunch of changes to quest rewards, obviously, with a lot of changes to the skills, marks, hexes, new skills. Uh, all I care about is flame walls early. So that'll be fun to see yeah. blazing salvos after you kill Merveil with an L with a nail. Yeah. Capital L at the end. I didn't care about the rest. what do you think? Well, doing Clarissa's quest in act three is going to be a much bigger deal now. Uh, that's normally where you would unlock uh, curses and some auras and stuff like that. And so a lot of those now have been, you know, updated, but they've actually, I've noticed that they really revamped which characters can get, like which starting classes, the Marauder, or the Witch can get specific skills and curses, which I thought was really good, uh, really needed to be done. So Act 3 will be a big deal, um, especially with what you can buy and purchase. So I'm excited for that. But that was that was kind of what stood out to me. There were a lot of definitely changes. And so if you're a guide writer, make sure you look it up because it might not be the same as it used to be. It's true. Did you see the PvP changes? <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my favorite parts of the entire thing. We I always like to bring them up because I don't care about them. Oh, neither does GGG, clearly, because they're like, <laughs> um, we'll bring it in a follow-up patch. Yeah, what, <laughs> what does it say? To ensure heist and the new skills receive the necessary QA time, we'll be providing PvP changes in a follow-up patch after the launch. I, you know what? It, it is thoughtful to include. There are PvP players out there. My guess, now you criticize console like and the you console criticize people. standard. To me, PvP is smaller than the console standard 100%. Community. I agree with you. That, but I, I have no idea. But if there's no, one community I could make fun of, like you make fun of me, I could make fun of PvP in the same way. I can't imagine there's a real PvP community. If there is, I've, they're so underground. I've never <laughs> seen or heard them. You know what? Ever. There's all the traffic we get in our Discord, I haven't heard anybody talk PvP. There's even a couple console folk in there that speak up. But if you're in our Discord and, uh, and you're PvP, you shout loud. Shout loud. Let us hear you. I, I would be we'll very ignore surprised you, but, but shout loud. if there's anyone. So they had uh, their bug fixes section. Uh-huh. Lots of them. It's yeah. just great. Yeah. I can't. I Some of them are so serious, though, even though they might be specific or rare. I, I can't believe like this one here. Uh, fixed a crash. We're adding an item to animated guardian while wearing the flesh crafter. You would instantly kill the guardian and your game would crash. Like, oh, my goodness. If you didn't know and your guardian would die, let's say it was like the last item you'd already beefed up your guardian. Whew, well, that's a biggie. Any stand out to you? Uh, nope, but I did. I actually found a, a weird bug today. Bah, 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 bah. And I'm hoping that it's one of the fixes. It wasn't listed specific, specifically, but I logged on to my character because uh, less than Dennis was asking if anybody had any standard stuff. One of the guys in our Discord, and I was like, "Well, I got a headhunter. I don't want. Do you want it?" He's like, "Yeah, sweet." So I logged in, and then I also was like, "This seems like a good time to switch my hideout. Like, you know, I need a new hideout for heist. Feels okay. like what I should do." So I found one that I liked because that's what I do. I steal them. But when you, for me at least, right now, ever since I did the new update and whatever, I click the import button. So if you're in your hideout and you click import. It opens up a Windows pop-up to find the file you want to import. As soon as I hit the import button, the game would freeze and just close. I tried it again, tried it in a bunch of different hideouts. And then, so I was kind of curious and like 18 hours before somebody had posted that they were having that same problem. A bunch of other people were, and they said that you have to open decorations first, then click import and it wouldn't crash. That's a big deal. When you That's can, a bug. <laughs> when I worked in QA, when you have 100% uh reproduction rate on a crash bug you fix it. i never slash bugged it no of course not why would you i actually forgot too busy <laughs> I looking at it was. yeah that's right i yeah. closed it and i was like whatever i'll get a hideout later nope i did find a hideout because i found that fix so anyway i love when they have lots of fixes i know people yeah, don't care about too. it i actually don't care either but to me it's actually a really good sign that they there's a lot of stuff that they realize needs to be fixed and they do it 
Yeah, that's right. Some big, some small. There were th- uh, three others that stood out to me, but only because I'm, I was like, imagine if I was in this situation. So imagine if you were in the arcade map and there was an inaccessible area that was generated, but it had a tantalizing a large amount of tantalizing. monsters. Yeah, it says Ooh. fixed a bug which could allow the arcade map to generate an inaccessible but tantalizingly monster-filled area. I love that. I didn't know that they actually used that word. That's amazing. Yeah. And then another one. These both these next two are for mineral pools, and then I'm done my my bug my bug shoutouts. But fixed a bug where the mineral pools map could play strong boxes in inaccessible locations. Sorry to the person who had a unique strong box. <laughs> <laughs> And then um, they also, in Mineral Pools, they fixed a bug where the boss room could be unreachable with the exception of certain travel skills. Now, that, for me, would would be a big deal. I remember doing, what's that unique map where you have to jump around Pillars of a Rune, I think oh, it is? Oh, yeah, it's brutal. I hate the map, especially because I don't do travel skills. And so I decided one time, this is leagues ago, to add a travel skill just so I could get there. I picked a travel skill that couldn't do it. I think it was one of the... Like, uh, I think it was con- the first league of Consecrated Path. I was trying it out, even though it makes me nauseous. But you still need, I think at that time, you still needed an enemy to proc onto. And I couldn't get any, so I couldn't go anywhere. Yeah, it's not a fun map anyway. Cool. So I think we pretty much hit all the stuff we cared about. Yeah. I think we actually hit most stuff. We did pretty decent. <laughs> we almost read it word for word. Yeah, so you can check out the the actual patch notes. I assume most people have already read it or are going to be checking it out at some point because we've only got, what, three more days? Three more days till league launch. Exciting. Hope that item filter stuff's out soon. I have work to do. Do you, um? so you know what you're doing, hey? You're doing Glacial Actually, Cascade. what are you going to play? What are you going to play, Ty? Well, you knew last time. You said you knew. Yes, and then I was flipping. <laughs> what? I'm sorry. I want to know what you said, but just tell, let me tell you. I'm not going to. T- I'm not going to name who this person is, but I was just out of curiosity checking the post. You know the the forum post for their 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 notes, their patch notes, and okay. right at the top of this particular page, it says another league to skip. See you at Poe Two, guys. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> like, okay. Seriously, you posted that. Yeah. Oh, man. Now, did you see um, on the patch notes page the first 20 replies? No, I don't tend to read them anymore. Let me read them to you. Pog. All of them? Pog. Pog. Troll. Pog. Pog. R.A.P.V.D. Slinger. Pog. Pog. (laughs) Nice. Can I just say, when we, ever since that, our last episode, I've had a lot of people that are, I would say, probably our age bracket as well, go, you're darn right. Pogs are pogs. We played pogs. <laughs> That's right. We had pictures of wicked slammers, like that sweet skull metal one with blades. That was awesome. Anyway, so what so, are you going to play next week? Well, I'm trying to revamp my three guides, but obviously this big, I have to wait for patch notes. I couldn't do a lot of work ahead of time because all my builds revolve around curses in some way. So originally I was going to do my righteous fire elementalist that I wanted to test out. But then I'm like, oh, well, maybe I should do the enemy weapon poison one that I wanted to do. And, you know, I was kind of flipping and flopping a bit. But now with all the life regen stuff that I saw in here with the vitality change and when it becomes available, the enduring cry change, I think I might go back to my original plan, like you said, of righteous fire with the elementalist. Um, Fun. I'm, I'm surprised Gollum didn't change because life regen with the Gollum. Uh, I mean, unless it's already balanced, I was just expecting when I saw the life regen stuff, I was expecting to see the stone golem somewhere. Didn't change. Uh, Elementalist didn't get touched. So I'm thinking that's uh, it's a good sign, though. I'm I'm even considering, though, even though I wanted to change to the Elementalist for my Righteous Fire build. Uh, it's going to be even easier to level with the Chieftain now, which was one of the issues leveling with the Chieftain before. So we'll see. We'll see. I got some decisions to make in almost no time at all. I think RF would be pretty fun this league. I I think so too. I'm probably going to I'm probably going to start off with it. I think it'll be pretty easy to level with, especially with the elementalist because you get spells right off the bat. You're not worried about like all these melee skills you're getting as a chieftain or marauder. So are you do, definitely doing glacial cascade? At this point, yeah. Unless something changes in the next 3 days. Why don't you do a double totem build? I don't even know if I'm going to do totem. I'm going to do like 
totems. I don't want to do mines again because I've done it, but I think it would look so cool. Why don't you do Glacial Cascade and Blazing Salvo together? No. Yeah, and then you just use Elemental Equilibrium and it's like pew, 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 pew. Oh, uh, it's going to be awesome. No, I don't like that idea at all. I, I'm probably going to do Glacial Cascade and I will probably... I, the thing is, I really want 36 challenges this league. So I feel mm. like I'm going to have to come out with a second character because I don't know that I would want to play one through the whole thing. Mm. But I don't know. I tell you what I'm not focused on is marks. I'm I'm waiting to see how they play out because I'm really nervous about them. Yeah. But the good thing is if I go Glacial Cascade, especially if I go Totems, I don't care. Yeah. Well, what do you think you're going to start with? What Ascendancy? There's so many good options for it now that it's 100% physical elemental conversion. Right? I know. You, the Inquisitor. I, I don't think you can deny the Inquisitor this one. That or the Hero font. I think you can deny Templar. anything I want. Yeah, I, know well, I will probably here. go Templar because if I, I think I want to go Totems because I've done Mines. I think Mines will be quite strong. I think if I was to go Mines, plus I, it would look really cool like to throw down that many Mines and just have my screen literally explode. I like that. I like that. <laughs> just make sure you get a, a dumbed down. I'm going to get the brightest thing ever. And I'm going to turn that bloom up to max. I wish I could turn up your bloom. <laughs> yeah, no, I actually, I have bloom maxed on my console just to, just to spite the haters, even though they're never going to see it, but I'll probably have it cranked down when I play with you just so that I can see the screen. That's awesome. Well, I we was got also, three days. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I've also been considering zombies strongly just because i haven't done zombies with you in forever and i'm gonna be doing um re-leveling an elementalist with righteous fire anyway on console so i'm excited for heist i think the whole like concept of heist is going to be a lot of fun co-op 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 watch it's not going to be as compatible as we think and we're going to hate it for co-op just as much as harvest yeah i'm curious to see how it plays out it'll be fun i don't really care because at least we can play together it's not like uh, so no matter what, whether we think it's as good as it was hoping to be, it, it still is better than any league in a long, long time. Yeah. You know what's going to happen, though? We're going to play Friday night, right? When it comes out for our podcast, so we can get a couple hours under our belt before the podcast. Oh, I'm playing all day. <laughs> That's exactly right. And I'm not going to be able to play all day. So you know what's going to happen. I'm going to be in maps. My goal <laughs> That's right. is going to be maps by our podcast. I You're going to be that. in maps. I'm going to be like a week until I hit maps. And then by the time we get to end game, you're not going to need any of the stuff that I get from heist anyway, because you're going to have tons. You'll just get it. Yeah. It's just going to be funny. You're just not going to need it at all. I'm excited for heist. I think it's going to be fun. We got three more days. Me too. I think uh, it's a good time to wrap up episode 46, 3.12 dev manifesto and patch notes of forever exile, the path of exile podcast. I am Justin, AK tags. I'm Tyler wrecker of days and it's 312. Thanks a lot for joining us. We'll catch you guys in just a couple days. Episode 47. Peace.